Hey YouTube, Demeka here, uh, and welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. I hope you enjoyed um, the last two that I've made, just on the basics of Tarkov, an introduction to the game, and also some of the movement commands and some of the uh, weapon handling that you would find in your first raid of Tarkov. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the health system and the med system, which is uh, fairly complicated, as, as are most things with Tarkov. Um, we're going to uh, break down some of the different uh, items that you're going to find, what medding in a raid uh, looks like, um, and how to sort of efficiently uh, load out your character so you've got the right meds for every raid. The best way to introduce the med system, I think, is to have a look at a raid that I did recently uh, on Twitch, where there was a bit of fighting uh, and a bit of medding, and we'll go through it and see how that works, and that will help us understand um, what some of the items I use do uh, when we go through them later. So let's go over and check it out. So medding is super important in Tarkov, one of the, one of the best things you can learn um, early on in the game. I will preface this guide by saying that most of the times in your early Tarkov career when you get shot, uh, you're gonna die straight away. So knowing what to do when you do live uh, and you can survive is of the utmost important. And it's important also to note that there are a variety of factors that will impact uh, whether you live or die. Obviously the aim of the people or the scavs you're playing against, but also the armor you're wearing, the helmet you're wearing, um, and things like the type of bullets that you're being shot at with. So let's get stuck into this raid and we're going to pause at certain points just to go through what's sort of happening here. What I want you to pay attention to besides the terrible gameplay is the um, green icon in the top left hand um, part of the screen that shows us the status of all of our different limbs. So let's, ha let's uh, take a look. So you can see here I'm starting to get shot uh, my vision, vision is starting to blur and there's little blood sprays on the screen. You can immediately see that my uh, limbs and areas of my body are starting to go from green to sort of yellow, indicating that I'm starting to take damage there. And you can also see that my arm has gone black. I want you to keep that in mind as we watch forward. Fuck me. Not as much. So here I've identified that my character has a heavy bleed. Okay, and without fixing this, my health is going to whittle away until it gets to zero and I'm going to die. So an Esmarch is like a tourniquet um, that's going to stop that heavy bleed straight away. Now we will go over the different items, but it's important just to go through what I'm doing in this fight. So I mentioned there that he's blacked our arm and what that means is that he's reduced that limb to zero health. Keep that in mind. Now, terrible aim has gotten me this far, and you can see now I'm really starting to take some shots. The blood's still on the screen, my arm is blacked, and all of my other limbs are approaching uh, red and close to zero. I've now decided to go into my um, secret stash, uh, my gamma container where I keep all my spare meds, and I've decided to use an IFAC, which is just a, a med kit, it's quite a good one, uh, to start healing up some of my uh, limbs that are close to zero. And you can see there, the charges have gone from 300 to 90. That means cumulatively, uh, I've healed 210 points worth of damage across my uh, character so far. You can see now, my arm is still black, which I want you to keep in mind. My legs and uh, stomach are red, and my arm is red, but my thorax has been brought back up to green. So the med kit has probably prioritized the thorax, and you can't see it because of the twitch overlay, but the head as well. I want you to think of the head and the thorax as some of the most important areas uh, on your body. I've now decided to start healing up some of my other limbs by using this other car med kit that I've got in my rig. Now you can see here I've taken even more damage and my character's pretty close to um, dying. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of my limbs are now blacked out. That means that they've been reduced to zero and specifically it's my arms, my uh, stomach and my legs. Now you might be wondering, hey, a lot of your limbs are at zero, why aren't you dead? In Tarkov it's extremely important to remember that the limbs that are blacked out here can actually be blacked out for a little bit of time. Your thorax and your head are the ones that are the most important. If they get zeroed out, then your character dies instantly. It's also really important to note, and we'll go over this later, is that if your stomach is blacked out, you will start to lose your hydration level really quickly. And we'll have a look at those energy and hydration levels in a little while, but uh, this is quite alarming.
You can see my character's coughing, okay? There's a screen effect, which is like blood in the eyes and things are starting to get a little bit hectic. <laughs> now, instead of just clicking the uh, eye fact, which I did previously, I've now decided to manually go to my um, character screen and click the health tab. And I'm going to heal my thorax and head straight away. So again, you'll see that everything is zeroed except the thorax and the head. So if you want to specifically heal a part of your body, you can drag your med kit, whichever one you're using, and drag it over the area you wish to heal. Blacked out limbs cannot be healed from zero, okay? Without the use of a special item, which you'll see in a moment. Now here, I'm using a painkiller. Painkillers, uh, there's a few varieties in the game, um, but I'm trying to get rid of the like um, pain of having broken legs so that I can walk around and still move. Um, and painkillers last you know two to five minutes depending on which ones you're using, uh, and they can help sort of get you through a tough time so you can kill the enemies and um, find somewhere to meta. So this doesn't actually heal anything, it just helps me uh, keep some mobility while I'm trying to fight off the scavs. Now, you'll see I've taken my Serve 12 kit, and this will be explained when we go through the items, but basically I'm now trying to bring up my limbs um, that have been blacked out. Uh, I'm trying to really re heal them with a special item so that I can then bring them back up to, uh, to green. Uh, and you'll see what happens here. Now, it takes quite some time to use. I've obviously cut that video. You can see my stomach is now at one out of 46. And what this means is I can now use my IFAC or my car med kit, which I've been using to heal up my stomach. And I could proceed to do this with my arms and legs if I have enough time. But what you'll find is that I finally bite the dust. Oh, I can fix my legs. So I think the best way to start with um, the medical items in Tarkov is to link them to the specific debuffs that they cure uh, in a Tarkov raid. Now, unfortunately the footage from before the uh, debuff area was blocked by the Twitch overlay. Um, but if that wasn't there, you would have seen a bunch of different things come up. Uh, and learning these is a really good way of identifying what meds you need to use. So one of the most common ones, and the one we're gonna start with, is uh, light bleeding. So you're gonna get that from sort of like light gunshots. Uh, and the effect is that it's 0.8 HP lost in each non-destroyed body part every six seconds until treated. Uh, it lasts until it is treated. Uh, and if your total HP pool reaches zero or your thorax or head bleed out, uh, that leads to death. So the two items or basic items that uh, you're gonna use early on in the game to cure bleeds, uh, light bleeds, are the bandage. The aseptic bandage is number one, and the army bandage is number two. Now they're both exactly the same pretty much. Uh, they both have a two second use time. Uh, the only difference is that the army bandage has two charges, um, and the aseptic bandage has one. After light bleeds, you've got heavy bleeds, and uh, obviously they're similar in the sense that you are bleeding. Instead of 0.8 HP lost, it's actually uh, 0.9 HP, uh, there's a blood effect on the screen. One of the differences with the heavy bleed is that you'll actually leave blood trails on the ground and any sort of clued in player, if they're trying to hunt you down and you're running away to try and heal, actually can follow you know, those trails. So there are three uh, basic items uh, that can be used to treat heavy bleeds. So the first two are quite similar. There is the Esmarch tourniquet and the cat hemostatic tourniquet. Uh, both of them are one use only. Uh, the difference being that the cat uh, tourniquet is applied slightly faster than the Esmarch. The third item is the Calloc B hemostatic applicator. And this is an injector with three charges uh, and the use time is very quick. So you'll find as you progress through the game, the uh, Calloc B is the best way to heal. It's important to note that with um, light bleeds and heavy bleeds, once you have managed to get rid of them, your character is gonna be applied with the fresh wound debuff. And this debuff lasts for 240 seconds or until the wounds reopen. And that can happen in a number of ways. If you get shot in the same limb that you've just healed the bleed, it's gonna start again. The other thing is it's, it's worth noting that once you've healed bleeds, light or heavy, if you're sprinting around the map, just like in real life, uh, it might actually reopen the wound, in which case uh, you'll have to heal them again in some way. And it's, and it's important to note here that taking some spare bandages, spare tourniquets instead of just one, uh, is a great way to avoid this sort of um, becoming more troublesome than it should be. Another common debuff uh, you're going to receive either by being shot or from falling uh, from high, high uh, heights, which I've done an embarrassingly large amount of times, is the uh, fracture debuff. Now, this applies to your arms and legs only. Um, if you fracture your legs, um, you're going to know this is going to happen on your character because you're not going to be able to sprint 
um, you're going to be sort of hobbling around, your screen's going to be going up and down. Um, if your arms are fractured, you'll notice when you are aiming down the sight that it's shaky um, and things like that. So there are two basic items in Tarkov that can heal fractures. The first one is the splint. Uh, it's a five second use time uh, and one charge only. That's going to be applied to one of the fractures if you have multiple. The next more advanced um, item is the uh, aluminium splint, which has a shorter use time with three seconds and also has five charges. So similar, just a bit more efficient in terms of uh, bag space. When you are getting shot at uh, and you've taken some hits and escaped from Tarkov and when you've got fractures or bleeds or a combination of both, you'll find that you'll also be applied with the uh, pain debuff. And uh, if this is left, uh, you'll then also be hit with the tremor debuff as well. Uh, you'll see a screen starts to go all dark and it's hard to sort of see things. Uh, and pain needs to be managed while you find an appropriate place to heal. Uh, and there are a few uh, different ways that you can manage your pain. The ones you're likely to find and use most uh, early on in your Tarkov journey will be the uh, just regular painkillers. Um, and they're four charges uh, and they give you about 95 seconds of pain. We'll also probably come across some ibuprofen, uh, and as you can see, these are 15 charges, and they last uh, about 280 seconds. Um, you also might find some morphine injectors as well. Again, uh, this will last about 300 seconds, uh, but they're probably more rare than um, just, just the regular painkillers you might get to find. Later on in the game, um, people use things like Vaseline and also Golden Star Balm, um, because it has other effects, not just pain relief, uh, it also lasts the longest at all. It's important to note, particularly with broken arms and broken legs, um, when, you, when they are broken, particularly the legs, you can't walk around anymore. Uh, you can't sprint anymore, sorry. You can walk, but you can't sprint. If you do take painkillers, you are able to sprint. Um, your character will make like a grunting noise because they're kind of like pushing through it. Um, but it does allow you a bit of freedom in terms of uh, maybe continuing a fight if you think you're going to be able to take the person on, uh, or running away and resetting the fight and getting a chance to uh, fix your broken, broken limbs. Finally, there are two items um, that you are able to use in Tarkov that allow you to bring back uh, blacked out limbs uh, from zero to one so that you can heal them. The first one is the CMS and you'll see this has five charges. Now you can use this on your stomach, your arms and your legs if any of them are at zero. And using this will uh, bring the limb back up to one. Uh, the total amount of hit points for that limb once a CMS has been used will be reduced uh, by about half roughly, um, but then it enables you to um, bring it back up. Um, to max uh, and get it back up to green. Uh, the CMS is great, but the Serve 12 Surgical Kit is the big one. Um, it has a longer use time, but what it does do is it also um, fixes fractures as well as bringing the limb back up to one. So you can do a sort of two in one there. And also the penalty in terms of the max hit points is, is uh, less. So you'll end up with more hit points uh, than using a CMS. But these two things are the only way you can get black limbs um, back up to one so that you can use a med kit to heal them. Now it's time to go through uh, some of the med kits you're likely to find. None of these things work uh, well in Tarkov without a med kit to sort of heal your character back up, particularly when you're talking about blacked out limbs. The game sort of introduces them um, and one of the interesting things is that the better that your med kits get, the more uh, auxiliary effects there are. So not only is it going to heal your hit points, but it's also going to take away some of the debuffs that we've just spoken about. We'll go through them um, in sort of order that you're likely to find them. So the first one is the AI2 med kit, commonly referred to as the slice of cheese. Uh, you can see it, it is only 100 points of healing um, and, it, and it doesn't remove any debuffs. And once you've used that 100 points, it's done. The next med kit you're most likely to find is the car med kit. And you can see it's a significant step up from the AI2. It heals a total of 220 uh, HP. And if you use it enough <clears throat> or, or, or on a particular limb that is suffering from the light bleed effect, it will also remove the light bleed effect, meaning that you don't need to use bandages to fix that up. One of the stronger med kits in the game that you're gonna come into contact with, uh, not, that, not that far into the game, is the Salewa med kit. Now you do need these for an early quest in Tarkov, but they are a really strong med kit. They heal 400 uh, total hit points. And uh, much like the car med kit, but a bit more advanced, if you're using them on limbs that have light bleeding or heavy bleeding, uh, the Soleil was going to fix that right up as well. So it means you also may not have to take in as many bandages or tourniquets uh, or hemostatic applicators. Uh, and the Soleil was a really great choice for sort of uh, early to mid game med kits. These handy little med kits that I'll show you next are called the IFAC and the AFAC. And what you'll notice is that they only take up one square despite having quite a lot of healing potential. So there's not too much different about them. Um, the AFAC heals 400 hit points as opposed to the IFAC's 300. But much like the Soleil, where both of these will take away light bleeds and heavy bleeds if they're used on the limb affected by those debuffs. Finally, we have the Rolls-Royce medkits, the Grizzly uh, medkit. You'll see it has a whopping 1800 
points of healing, which is heaps and enough just about any rage you're likely to find yourself in. Uh, much like the Salewa, the IFAC, and the AFAC, it uh, cures uh, light bleeds and heavy bleeds on the affected limbs, but it can also cure fractures um, if you're using them on broken arms or legs, and can also have a pain killing effect as well. Finally, there are a load of uh, stimulant injectors that you can find in Tarkon. It's about 15 all up, I believe. Now, I don't know all of them, I don't always use all of them. Um, they vary in their effects, but generally it gives you some sort of like extra power. Uh, for example, some make you run, uh, like give you more stamina to be able to run further. Some can increase your carry weight for a certain period of time um, and they can increase your statistics. Now, most of them, if not all of them, have sort of downsides after that effect has worn off. Uh, but one I would recommend getting your head around um, towards sort of the mid game is the Propital Injector. Now the Propital Injector does have a painkiller effect for 240 seconds, which is really handy. It also ups your metabolism, your health and your vitality and also heals one HP per second. So if you're in a firefight, that could mean the difference between uh, living and dying. And it is, is a pretty handy one that you can pick up pretty cheap um, in the early to mid game. A really important part of the uh, health system in Tarkov is that whether you take injuries out of a raid, uh, if you survive, or if you are killed, um, any, any of the injuries that you've sustained in that raid will carry over with you. They don't reset um, at the end of the raid. However, at the end, you'll be brought to a screen like this, and it's the uh, after raid treatment screen. And you can see a breakdown of what ammo killed you, what parts put, took the most damage. Uh, you are then given an option to heal it up uh, for a certain price. Now you can see here, uh, it's 10,600 rubles to heal my character from 1% up to 100%. And that will remove all of the debuffs that I've come out of the raid with, like fractures, leads, whatever I might have taken, taken on during that raid. Up until level five, it's free. So there's no reason not to heal up uh, at the end of the raid. After level five, it costs, you know, it varies depending on the amount of damage that you've taken, but it'll max out at like 12,000 rubles. And my recommendation is that you take this uh, after raid treatment as many times as you can because it allows you to go back into a raid straight away. If you don't do this, your character will be injured and it takes a certain amount of time for their um, injuries to disappear, for their health to come back up. There are some items in the hideout you can build that increase the speed at which this can happen. Uh, but definitely in the early game, you really wanna think about paying to have your character uh, healed up to full. The other option is that you are able to use your med kits and your items that we've just gone through outside of the raid uh, and you can heal up your character that way as well if you find that you have a surplus of meds. One of the things that's really important to notice uh, in the early game is in the bottom um, left of this picture, you've got the hydration level and the energy level represented by the uh, little water drop and the lightning bolt. Now these are out of 100 um, to start with. And injuries uh, will definitely start to deplete some of the hydration and energy levels as you play the game. Uh, just even running around the map will, will mean that you are um, you know, losing hydration and losing energy. But particularly when you start taking damage, when you start bleeding, and also when you start taking things like painkillers, you'll find that these can drop quite significantly. And one of the, the big problems new players face is that they manage to heal up and then realize they don't have any food or water to bring their hydration and energy back up to an acceptable level. Uh, and if you've got a while to go in the raid or you need to make it to an extract uh, on big maps like woods, uh, you'll often find that this will kill you. So early on in the game, it's important to manage these levels to make sure that if your hydration and energy are a little bit low, like around half going into a raid, that you take some food and water with you um, into that raid. After all this information, you're probably wondering, what should I bring into my first sort of type of raids? Uh, and this will vary a little bit depending on your play style and how confident you are with what you're gonna do. But for most new players, I recommend you bring enough meds to cover all eventualities in any given raid. So you wanna think about the debuffs that we've just gone through, like light bleeds and heavy bleeds, uh, as well as fractures and think about the things you're going to bring in. So you're going to bring in a mixture of bandages uh, and tourniquets to fix those things. And I'd often recommend you bring in more than one because it's frustrating if you fix one and then get another one and you can't heal. The other thing you're going to need to bring in is a splint or two for fractures. Um, and I, at the start of the game, I'd recommend bringing in a few of the AI2 med kits or the slice of cheese or maybe a car med kit if you've got it. That's in your rig and backpack. Uh, the good thing about Tarkov is that you can also put some meds in your secure container. Uh, and I would recommend putting in a stronger med kit in here, like a Salewa or an IFAC, uh, and some of the higher tier items that you might just need in a backup. Uh, the good thing is that this secure container cannot be accessed by other players, so if you die, you don't lose these things. But I'll often put a combination of a good med kit, an uh, aluminium splint, hemostatic applicator, um, even a Serve 12 or a CMS kit if you have it. Also, as mentioned before, make sure you're bringing in some food and water, um, either in your secure container or in your backpack, just in case you know it's one of those raids where you're getting smashed but you managed to live and you need to make it to the extract. 
Well, there you have it, guys, an introduction to the health and medical system in Tarkov. As you can see, it's, it's extremely complex, like we mentioned at the start of the video. Um, it sort of goes with the type of game that Tarkov is. It is very complex. Um, learning the health system is something that can really increase your chances of surviving early on in the game by identifying what um, debuffs you've got um, and what things you need to heal those quickly. Um, as you move through the levels and you get access to better meds, you know, what you bring is gonna change. But by the time you start doing that, you'll have a good understanding of what, what's out there uh, and what can be used to treat different effects in the raid. If this video helped you in any way, uh, I encourage you to leave a comment, like, uh, and subscribe, it really helped me out. Also giving some uh, feedback um, on this video and some of the others that I've done would really help me to improve over time. Uh, I stream on Twitch most days through the week uh, at a variety of American and Australian times. So if that interests you, the link will be in the description below. Uh, but until next time, take care and stay safe.